Hi. Hi. How's, how's thanks it? for having me. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming in. So the film's coming out in what, like a couple of days? Yeah. How are you feeling? Anxious. <laughs> 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 Something new is all over the places, and I hope it does good. You, you still, I mean, you're pretty pretty accomplished at this point. You still get, you still get nervous and anxious when this stuff comes out? Uh, yeah. For new media and try something new like uh, Young Will Smith uh, and Make Believe. Uh, yeah, actually, always anxious. Doesn't get any better. <laughs> That's good to know. Even when, you, even when you win a couple Oscars, the anxiety doesn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, all the more reason to get anxious. <laughs> right, right. Well, let's, let's talk about the something new okay. that you did as opposed to just talking about our nerves. <laughs> uh, the film seems like a pretty big leap of faith. One of the lead characters, Junior, is digitally generated. It's a younger version of the actor Will Smith. Now, listen, we've seen uh, digitally kind of created characters for a long time. We've even seen like people aged and, and de-aged. Uh, but this Gemini Man, the way it's being done is being billed as a first. What's, what's so groundbreaking here? Uh, because it's in human shape. Because we've been using digital for monsters, for even up to Tiger, that I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty realistic in not imitating humans. Uh, I think it's started to do, uh, it's been a long while, it does well with fantasy tales. Right. Um, but something with Will Smith, with uh, such a realistic kind of approach to it, I mean, for the real Wills, um, just casting somebody else wouldn't work, I think. And uh, the young character, his name is Junior, um, it is pretty much of a, another lead. So uh, I think just the brush of the wrinkles, uh, the aging is, is, is not going to work because uh, he has many things. He, he is an independent character. So I decided to go all full CG. Um, that, that was a decision I made. I think the technology is within reach. Actually, the technology is there. It's just how you make believe. That's a leap of faith. It, people keep calling it technology. It's really... a uh, uh, to, to me, artistic in that endeavor. What, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, you make it a hundred percent right, which computers can do, a technology can do. How do we believe in it? How does it play in the movie? That's the real test. I, I hear you know, that. It I, takes like once you get it right, you're still six months away. You have to try different things, see if you believe that's a young Will Smith. I, I hear there's a thing called the what is it? The uncanny valley. Where where yeah. where you get where we refuse to believe when it it's when it when a computer generated correct 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 me if I'm wrong <laughs> it's when a computer generated person is so lifelike that it actually makes the the audience unsettled is that what you're referring to here yeah something it, it, it's called uncanny because you cannot explain and you cannot reason with it <laughs> and you really wrestle with that and people's. Uh, um, suspense of belief is quite different, and I made a 3D attempt. That's the the separation is even larger than when you watch 2D movies, less in agree, agreement. So uh, that that's where the uncanny. That's that's my feeling. Is like even like five head of the department watching it. We're all experts. We we have different opinions. It's very hard to settle down to to like one thing. This is Will Smith, which is the beginning point, because it's already scientifically accurate the the the, the scientific study they, they do on age on will smith and every cell every skin tissues how that work and even enamel of teeth over the age what does it do it's mind-boggling how microscopic and how diligent they are it's like there's no way it's more right than when you film it 30 years ago uh still it uh, how they work on your brain is is it's a mystery. Does it make it harder or easier that Will Smith is in his 50s in this movie and also in his 20s? Does it make it easier or harder that Will Smith was well-known and famous in his 20s? Like, we know what Will Smith it's is. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fun to, to, to revisit somebody you know so well and represent so much good time, especially Will Smith. Uh, he associates good times. Not only we feel good when we watch the movie, we feel good about ourselves when we're watching it. Uh, so that was the the positive. The neg the downside is like people know well, and that's not the real Will Smith. This is how Will Smith was, we remember in in the two D movies with different kind of movie making and different characters. That that's the harder part, and we still want to believe. So you want to find a sweet spot. Um, 
you don't always find it because if it's exactly the same, that's like a, a trick. <laughs> it chippens it. It's like a, a same. Sh it becomes sticky. Um, but y y you want that, you don't want that. It's like bouncing back and forth. Uh, the real Will Smith didn't want to do it. He, he wants to prove he's a better actor, which he is which is a big problem. <laughs> he, he didn't want to do, he didn't want to be computer generated? No, he knows exactly how Will Smith worked 30 years ago. But I think uh, he's, sometimes I have to push him to do it. Yeah. Because he's, he's, he's 50 years old now. It's a much better actor than before. Right. Went through a lot. Right. So he just want to do something, shall I, shall I say, better or different. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just human nature, because he grew. Right. And... That part is hard to get rid of, to unlearn what he learned. Right. Um, no, I wrestle with the technology, with people in depression, and I also wrestle with, uh, with Will Smith. It's not exactly you back, go back in time. You're taking a 50-year-old body and, and mind to play younger. Uh, to be, you know, who wants to be a better artist? But who doesn't want to be younger? I mean, that that could be nice for Will Smith. On the it, surface, you know? yeah. Like when you're when you're in, when you're in your fifties, don't you want to be in your early twenties? Wouldn't that wouldn't that be? I, I thought he'd be down for that. F f physically, yeah. yeah. But mentally, I could have done better. I should know this. You know, could have might have. Um, it, it can do so much uh, improve improvement, which is part of the movie. When you look back at the younger self, what would you tell him? What to do? What not to do? There's that too. That's kind of parallel to the story. You know, this 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 film is really uh, incredible in a bunch of ways. So, for one, as we've been talking about, you have an older Will Smith, or sorry, like a, kind of the Will Smith now, playing against a younger version of himself and kind of fighting one another and having fight scenes with one another. It's also shot as 120 frames per second. Uh, is that right? Uh, yeah. Which I, is, I think, it's also within reach that we're going to dimensionalize f filmmaking, which digital. Um, a media sort of allows it to happen. Let, it's let a me, more natural look, so you you're more like, look like it's more real. Yeah, so we're, we're used to 24 frames per second when we watch a film. This is 120 frames per second. It looks like your the the actor is right 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 there in, is right in front of you. Uh, that, that's come with an angle when when your two eyes come to to a conversion point, like in real life, you want to believe it's real. So in some ways, it's more immersive, but it's also challenging. That's, how, that's not how we're associated with movies. The movie's flat. You sort of have to process differently than life, um, and you're more willing to accept. You know, at least that's the natural way of how we associate with movie, with storytelling. There's a distance between uh, uh, real life and the stories, but now the stories are right up in front and some people are like embrace it uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and some people go like <laughs> um some people are, are more, are yeah, more, more like yeah it's, it's all over the places but to me uh, i have five years in the process it's pretty natural to me now and i really like to introduce this uh, to the audience i uh, know we, we don't always uh, i believe where you saw it is uh, right here it should be 60 frames uh, and 2K, we shot 120 and 4K, so more resolution, more smoothness, so less uh, strobe. Why, why, why is it so important for you to use the most modern and the newest technology in your, in your filmmaking? Uh, I, I believe that's the, the next step of our, we're seeing movie and uh, absorbing stories, at least one of the options. Um, it, it's more immersive, uh, it's a different experience. I had a friend explain it to me this way because I'm not a film guy; I'm a musician. <laughs> and I, I watched the I watched the film, and I, I talked to him afterwards, and he said it's kind of like listening to a song, spending your entire life listening to a cassette tape, and then someone playing playing you a CD. <laughs> but he said the thing is, it's like it's like if that happened, and everyone in the filmmaking world said, no, 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 we don't want the CD; we have the cassette tape. Like sometimes it can feel that, with all respect, like you you take all these big groundbreaking steps, and people will just write and say, no, I just I just want the older style. What's that? like for it, you it's you no know, sometimes you get hit <laughs> um, but gradually I understand people actually you know we have this expression you can see for yourself uh, um, it doesn't really count sometimes because we, we see things differently uh, there's a separation how we process image into our head mm -hmm. so there, there are differences uh, where you try something new first is a shock to yourself once you get used to it um, it would like the friend to share that with you. 
to me, a lot of images are beautiful, uh, but it might be jarring for somebody else. Uh, I just thought this is a new, uh, it's a different chance for us to absorb story and particularly uh, study into human faces because your, your mind is so much sharper. It feels like in life you can uh, feel the person, you feel the vibe. You sort of see through their skin, you can feel their God feelings, you can read the subtle deception in the eyes, the thoughts, the, you know. It feels like I could study into that. Uh, because new technology, they're very costly, so normally you try out with uh, uh, something bold like action, <laughs> uh, because those are expensive movies made, and then they have their cultural background, their, their things. Yeah their mind track to work with. So it's, it's, to me, it's much harder than if you just try out a painting or write a different poetry. It's movies, it's expensive, it's mass entertainment. Mm. So you also wrestle with the cultural habits. It's, it's, uh, it's certainly an, an, incredible, an incredibly impressive film, Gemini Man. I think, you know, the first time you see Will Smith uh, facing off against young Will Smith, you, you can't help but kind of have your mind blown a little bit. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Academy Award-winning director Ang Lee, the man behind films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Brokeback Mountain. His new film, Gemini Man, starring Will Smith times two, opens on Friday. Um, can we just talk about Crouching Tiger for a second? Sure. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out in 2000, became the highest grossing foreign language film in American history. It was the must-see film of 2001. It was nominated for 10 Academy Awards. Now that we have some distance from it 20 years later, are you able to distill what happened there, what, what made it so special? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Uh, sometimes it takes time to see the shape and the consequence of <laughs> some happening. Back then, I was overwhelmed. I made um, um, kind of an over-aged, kind of my childhood fantasy, maybe a little bit of a midlife crisis into that movie. And I was empowered to make a martial art movie the way I wanted. And that was a little jarring for the uh, Asian market, who are very used to the genre. I bent many roses. And it was very troublesome, but it would become like the best, uh, biggest hit in the outside of a uh, Chinese language territory. Um, I, I think uh, looking back, is is really I uh, maybe I A graded the B movie genre. You you A graded the B movie. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I it's not all good. <laughs> 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 I genre has its thing. Is uh, for that genre is is supposed to be like it's, it's a pulp, it came from pulpy fictions, uh, martial art fictions. It's kind of our, our secret, the hidden dragon, the secret desires, a sinful uh, pleasure, mm -hmm. um, a guilt, guilt pleasure rather. Uh, but we take it so seriously. If we try to refine it, it, it's in some ways it refused to work. But in the other lands, like in the West, it was just fresh to that. Right. Uh, it's a blast. So uh, I, I, I constantly sort of fall into this trap. It's doing something that seems to be very seductive to me at the, at the point. At, and then I might get hit, might get... It's a stretch. It gets larger than I could handle. Is that what's going on? Is that <laughs> what's going on right now? Is that how you're feeling right now about this new uh, film? I, I think in a grander scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're feeling a bit overwhelmed? Like, oh, this could be great. It's a saga. If you want to feel brave, courageous, you get into it. It's really sexy. It's really exciting. Then you feel like... It's larger than I could handle. So is, is, that, is that the reason? Because I know, I know I read an interview that around 2004, I mean, after you had the success of the, you know, the biggest foreign language you know, movie in you know, 10 trillion years with the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you were going to give up filmmaking in, in 2004. Is, is, is that why you were feeling overwhelmed? Why is that? Yeah, I feel more so because I'm also older too. But what, 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 what made you want to quit in 2004? I was just exhausted. <laughs> I was like, I had enough. 2004, that was, after that, I was, I wanted, uh, Crouching Tiger, I wanted to retire. I thought I was exhausted. I had enough, and it was quite fulfilling. Um, it's got a happy ending. We got an Oscar and stuff. Yeah. And I got to push into doing the Hulk. That's even a larger scale um, in terms of A grading B genre. 
Yeah. <laughs> this time and then, is, I, then I got really like beat and exhausted. And then uh, my father just passed away before he did. He said, go ahead and make a movie. I always feel guilty that I wasn't a practical person and doing entertainment. But when he said that, I have to go ahead and make another movie. Um, so I, made a, I chose to make a small movie I thought nobody w- would see in Canada, of <laughs> all places, Canada here. And it turned out to be Brokeback Mountain. So I just continued to make movies. From time to time, I still feel that tired feeling. But this is, uh, uh, it, 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 you know, thinking back with all the uh, the struggle I have, uh, it's an honor to to make movie. Really, it's, it's precious. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it, it really is, and, and it's a very special kind of life. And they're and they're, and they're more than just entertainment. I mean, you mentioned Brokeback Mountain. Um, some people credit that film with helping to bring queer cinema in, into the mainstream. Did it feel groundbreaking when you were making it? No, I, I just want to make a movie. I was exhausted. Um, I was humbled. Uh, all I did was uh, secure acting. It was a great material. Uh, I just want to get it done. I was very modest. It turns out that um, there seems to be a movie guy who nursed me back because everybody worked. I found it was brilliant, great, especially those young actors Yeah, uh, who was so brilliant. It was scary how good they are. It, it's just everything went right. Even the weather was right. Uh, everything was beautiful. And I was in Calgary. That was the year of Flames get to the playoffs and, and all that. And I I never uh, get distracted into any activity other than shooting a movie. But while shooting that movie, I saw eight, play, eight playoffs. Uh, so it was like a blessing. I was, I was very lucky with that movie. Um, it's a movie... It's tragic, but it's uh, it's a tragedy. But it's uh, it's about love. It's very nursing. Help, help me understand. N- nurturing, yeah. To yeah. Me. Help me understand something. Like, with with all respect, like the vibe I'm getting from you is that you you're kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how these things are going to work out. I don't know. I mean, I mean, they might do well. I'm kind of freaked out about it. I might get. You keep on saying I might get hit. I might get hit by the critics. I might get beat up a little bit. And but well, yet, I help to do it. <laughs> but yet, you take on like hugely ambitious <laughs> projects, you know, like not just Broke Bay, not Broke Bay Mountain, but I'm talking about like The Life of Pi, The Life of Pi, a, a book <laughs> that some said was unfilmable, that you thought was unfilmable. You took it on. You made it into something that another won awards. Another Canadian work. And now, <laughs> another Canadian, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just trying to get my money. Um, I'm trying to get paid by the government here. Uh, but then there's also the, this this Gemini man. What's going on here, man? Because it's like you feel overwhelmed. You feel like it's this is going to be incredibly challenging. I can tell by the way you're standing right now with sort of your arms crossed. But you take on the hardest stuff. What's going on? I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I felt, why me? Why? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 that might be my shadow self. Uh, I, I couldn't help get attracted to those things. This is just too much fun uh, to too beautiful in there. Um, but what, what I mean, my good consciousness, I get scared. Um, but I, I, I couldn't help it. Uh, I think uh, curiosity play a big part. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to ex- explore and experience those, those beauty or uncanny feelings. Um, I think they're wonderful when you don't think about the real world. It's just a, it's a wonderful world there. I have a kind of a terrible comparison. You know, the, the Luba Sound's first movie, that diving movie, uh, Big Blue or Deep Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they, the two divers uh, competing uh, how deep they can they outdo each other, mm-hmm. how deep they can dive, mm-hmm. uh, free diving. Uh, one of them died mm-hmm. earlier, and before he died, he says, it's beautiful down there. Um, it's kind of scary and haunting to me. I told him about that. He, he said, uh, uh, I mean, the, the filmmaker, Lou Bazzone, he said, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're still here making movies. Um, m- movies are really attractive. Uh, it, it were be- besides ourselves. I, I could not help chasing it. But it's at times scary, at times, especially the people who believe in you, you go there together. 
uh, is it you know it can be beautiful sometimes. What what an interesting comparison. I mean, I I got I got exactly what you wanted to say there, which is that. You, you know, you dive in, you might be near so, death. The world is kind of crashing in around you, but it's beautiful. But it's beautiful. Uh, I, it's worth I wish it. I can des- describe it. When the movie comes out, it's everybody's movies, like in Pi, uh, I have the line there, I said, the story's yours. So when I tell the story, it's for you to either criticize to, or, or share or, or to tell. It's your story. You make the story in, in your mind, in, in any which way you want. But for the storytellers, the story just has to come through us. Uh, it's, it's our lives. We're, we're storytellers. We're image makers. Uh, there's something we sort of feel compelled to do. I tell you what, if I have ever <laughs> felt that, if I have, ever, if I have ever doubted that art or art making is like a vocation, is something that you have to do, something that you can't, I've never believed it so deeply until right now. Th- th- thank you for taking all those risks and making this work. And thanks for the new film, and thanks for talking to me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you.